Hello everyone and welcome to episode 37 of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by Eugenie Kruger, a homeopath and host of the Homeopathy Hangout podcast from Perth, Australia. In this inspiring episode, Eugenie and I dive into the fascinating world of homeopathy, a medical modality I am extremely passionate about that has supported both me and my horses for over a decade. It has been in existence for over 200 years and is currently utilised by over half a billion people worldwide and is a truly valuable ally in these modern times. Whilst a few common homeopathic remedies like Arnica have recently received more acceptance in public perception, in the past homeopathy has often been attacked, dismissed and mocked by Big Pharma and the mainstream media which sadly means many people only find their way to homeopathy as a last resort. In this fun and informative chat, Eugenie shares how homeopathy helps us approach health and well-being in a different, more empowering way, getting curious about symptoms and what they can teach us rather than simply suppressing them. We explore some of the newer science that is helping explain the power of homeopathy, including how through amazing people like Veda Austin, we are starting to understand the secret intelligence of water and the impact this has on how science understands the potency of homeopathic remedies. Homeopathy powerfully can offer support to the entire family, including pregnant mothers, newborn babies, animals and even plants. It can help in first aid situations and for chronic long-term conditions, whilst also being affordable enough that it can even be utilised to assist the poorest people. If you've previously dismissed homeopathy, I'd urge you to listen to this conversation with an open mind and delve into some of the incredible resources Eugenie has put together in the links below to allow you to draw your own conclusions and hopefully consider utilising the power of homeopathy to support your family going forwards. Well, welcome Eugenie and thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I'm really looking forward to speaking to you today and learning more from you about homeopathy because I think it's just such an amazing field and it's just something that I hope more people become aware of because it's just so powerful. But um, just to get us started, I like to just ask my guests if they'd share a little bit about their nature story. So it can just be really what nature means to you or has meant to you through your life or any fond memories or so if there's anything you'd like to share to get us started that'd be amazing. Sure hi Fiona it's so lovely to be on the show. So we actually live on 16 acres here in Perth Western Australia so we are outside all the time we have two donkeys and two cats and two dogs and six chickens (laughs) and I've got a nine-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old old son and they are outside all the time they also go to a Steiner school that's on 25 acres so we really want to make sure that they have you know reduce the technology and that they're outside in nature because it's so good for your gut microbiome like the kids are constantly in the dirt so my kids are so healthy and there's so many more studies coming out these days showing that a lot of the allergies and things that kids have is because they're simply not playing in the dirt enough. Yeah. And yeah. all my holidays were spent growing up in South Africa in the Cedarburg Mountains, climbing oh, the mountains, being beautiful. chased by baboons and snakes <laughs> and swimming in um, watering holes. And it's I love that you were in the Kruger National Park for five years. Yeah, and South no, Africa is it's, absolutely it's beautiful. It's just a beautiful country and I just that a real wilderness experience mind you in Australia you've got you've got that as well for your own children there haven't you and it it is just it's just so special to develop that connection in childhood isn't it I think it's um I mean you can develop it later in life but it's something magical and special about being a child with your imagination and out in the nature and and the animals and the plants and just having that freedom Absolutely. We have a little uh, outcropping of granite rocks here on the property the property, and the kids call it rock village. And <laughs> we will just lose them for days. Like they'll just be out there. I'll take like a little backpack and they just like spend the day there. So it makes me really happy to see them in nature. And we used to do a lot of camping these days, not so much. And I've always been into gardening. I've always had a veggie garden. And so, yeah, nature is very 
special to me. Yeah, interwoven in your life, which is amazing and fantastic to hear. And great, your children are are come being growing up with that experience as well. Um, whether they move away from it and come back to it, or you know, it ebbs and flows in their life, it's always just nice to have had that experience growing up that they can come back to. Absolutely. Yeah. So you um you got into homeopathy, I guess it was probably it was about 15 years or so ago wasn't it was that yeah, yeah 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 2010 yeah yeah I I didn't know I mean I you said that you actually uh when we connected at first and you even knew what homeopathy was I was blown away because so many people these days don't but in saying that in the UK I mean they had uh, homeopathic hospitals there yeah, and it was part of the yeah, NI, we have, NHS we do have, I think five, and Prince Ch- five homeopathic hospitals in the UK so we're quite lucky yeah. in that respect but there is still a lot of resistance to it even, even with with that sort of infrastructure in place and the the royal family have used homeopathy for about 200 years it was introduced by Queen Victoria in 1845 in the royal family and they've used it ever since and Prince Charles only uses homeopathics. The Queen used to travel with loads of remedies. She had a homeopathic physician called Dr. Peter Fisher, who sadly passed away on Ride Your Bike to Work Day, which apparently you guys have over there. And he rode his bicycle to work and he got run over by a bus after 17 years of being the Queen's homeopathic physician. Apparently the royal family uh, does have a new homeopathic physician now. But I don't know if it's good enough for the royal family. It's good enough for me. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, that, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? I think um, there is, sadly, in, in sort of mainstream, I'll say media, <laughs> there's a, sort of a little bit of a hatred for it. Um, and they often try and sort of um, undermine it and uh, dismiss it. But it's, you know, it stood the test of time. That's what I come back to. It's, it's you know, it's been around for a long time. And there's actually a lot of people worldwide that do use it. Um, I think I think you had an amazing figure on your website as sort of half a billion people worldwide. Half a billion people yeah. worldwide use homeopathy, and in many countries like India and South America, it's one of the main forms of medicine. Uh, India actually has a minister of Ayush, which is Ayurveda, um, yoga, and something else, and then homeopathy is in there as well as part of the acronym. And yeah, they've got hundreds of homeopathic hospitals in India. And uh, I mean, it's used all over Europe. It's used all over the world. Just some places is a little bit uh, better known than others. And I'm glad you've said it stood the test of time because, yeah, it's been around for 250 years. And the principles of homeopathy has remained unchanged. The Mm -hmm. remedies, we've we've never in 250 years ever withdrawn a homeopathic medicine from the shelves. And if you look at pharma and how drugs are pulled off the shelf on a daily basis, nobody has ever died from homeopathic medicine, whereas pharma drugs are one of the leading causes of death in the world. I know. Um, Homeopathy is shocking statistic, that isn't it? But most people. I mean, I think. well, my experience with homeopathy really came to the fore through my my horses, and um, unfortunately, I, I had sort of I, I had two horses that had very complex health issues, um, which conventional mainstream uh, medicine actually just ran out of options for them. There was just it was literally like we have we have nothing more to offer and I wasn't I'm not someone to sit on my laurels and I was like well I'm not gonna sit here with you know my my beautiful horses and and do nothing I'm like what can I do and it was at that point that I um found an amazing homeopathic vet in the UK who very sadly has now passed away he was um well into his 70s or 80s I think when he passed away um you know had this huge wealth of lifetime experience in veterinary medicine and then had developed an interest in homeopathy because he'd seen you know the times when there wasn't something that he could do and he'd wanted to find something that he could do and then he just obviously experimented with it and then saw that it worked again and again and again and um I think that's the power of it, isn't it? Is a lot of times some people do come to these sort of healing modalities because mainstream medicine fails them or doesn't have any options for them. And then when they've experienced it, they're like, actually, why why did I wait as this is the last resort? This is actually should be on the, <laughs> the front line of, of my choice and what to do. We have an acronym in homeopathy, TEETH. Tried everything else, try homeopathy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I'm so glad you mentioned about the animals, Fiona, because homeopathy is safe for not only 
a pregnant woman and babies from the second they're born to adults, to anybody on medication. It's got zero contraindications. It's also safe for animals of all sorts, uh, furry or feathery or um, hairless, whatever they are. And also uh, plants. Homeopathy is yeah. amazing for plants. So you can use remedies um, like aconite for transplant shock or arnica if a branch is, you mentioned before you you use arnica a lot arnica if a, a branch has a limb is broken off you can use yeah. um, silica if the uh, plant is wilting and you want to just make it nice and uh, strong uh -huh. again um, you can use it for various pests that the plants might be um, exposed to um, this an example is aphids and we often use the remedy coccinella which is actually okay. made from the um, ladybug oh one? yeah yeah, yeah. So, um, and, which would be their natural predator which is exactly. quite interesting yeah yeah so um, yeah lots you can use homeopathic remedy to rebalance your soil so if there has been a loss of the topsoil or there's been lots of um, pesticides and herbicides that's been sorry herbicides that's been used on the land yeah. you can use homeopathic remedies to help rebalance the soil and they actually do this in africa quite a lot there's an organization called homeopathy for health in africa and oh, they wow. actually okay. supply these homeopathic remedies to these farmers to help them yeah. to um, get rid of pests and um, to rebalance the soil but it's not getting rid of the pests as much as you are strengthening the plants yeah. so that they are more resistant to pests which is what we do with the humans as well we strengthen your vital force with the homeopathic remedies so that you're not as susceptible to illness and that's what it all comes down to at the end of the day yeah. is susceptibility yeah i think that's really important and um it was i was actually talking to my partner about this this morning in a, a different context to homeopathy but we were saying it's it is this difference between focusing on like symptoms and seeing them as like the problem and with homeopathy I mean that was one of my first experience with the homeopathic vet was I think he was with me for about two or three hours with my horse where it was normally a, a sort of conventional veterinary appointment is is probably you know running to sort of 15 minutes half an hour um and which you know is, is their approach and it's the same with doctors isn't it but it's you're looking at the whole person um, in this. We'll, we'll talk about people predominantly, but obviously it does relate to, to animals and, and plants. But you're looking at the whole, aren't you? You know, everything about them, you know, they're all of their traits. And that's really important for homeopathy, isn't it, is to understand. And I think that's why it's important to go to someone like yourself and a homeopath, because you have this experience and if you're sort of new to homeopathy you might experiment with arnica if you've got a bruise but sometimes there there are better remedies for things that you're dealing with um that a homeopath can help you find and deal with that's absolutely right and uh, we'll ask you a gazillion questions <laughs> when you come in um but one of the biggest things that you know regardless of the complaint is one of the first questions a homeopath will ask you when did the symptoms start Yep. So we'll always be interested. When did things change for you? When did your symptoms start? What happened around that time? Was there a fright? Was there a shock? Was there a grief? Was there perhaps a unknown poison? So maybe you moved into a new house and you didn't realize that there was black mold. And so mm -hmm. you've actually been poisoned by that. Was there maybe a smart meter that was installed next to your bedroom? And then that's why you're not sleeping at the moment. Did you maybe grow up in an area like where we live at the moment called the wheat belt, where they spray a lot of glyphosate? So were you maybe accidentally poisoned? Um, did you maybe have some medical intervention that caused something like theirs? What we call, we call it etiology. So what is the thing that caused the symptom yeah. that, you know, to start and kind of what happened around that time. And very often people won't be able to tell you because especially not if it was a long time ago, if it's a very chronic illness and they can't remember 20 years ago what happened when it started. And so we'll start asking some questions about their life and often we'll help them piece it together. And then, you know, we might say, oh, where were you living at the time? Or what did you do at the yeah. time? They, they might go, oh, actually, now that you mention it. I think and that's the thing, isn't it? Is for, for most people, like, we don't live, we're not taught, are we? We're not taught to have this kind of inquiring, curious, inquisitive mind about our lives and um, our experience. I mean, one of my horses who unfortunately had toxic liver poisoning, like I used to basically, I mean, he was very, very ill for, for six months and then it got progressively better. But I used to keep a diary literally like every day. I'd note everything, you know, environmental factors, how he was feeling and, and this is and 
and I'm quite glad in a way that I had that experience not that he suffered but it was it's meant that I do have that approach to my own life but for most people it's just it's completely foreign it's like you don't think about you know how you're going through life until something sort of stops you in your tracks and then you pop off to the doctor and you say oh I've got these symptoms and then they say okay well you know ha have this pharmaceutical drug and I think that for me is a huge thing about homeopathy is just changing like your your relationship with yourself really isn't it and your relationship with life and your awareness of of how you how you are living and everything that's possibly impacting you Mm, it's actually that was just thinking it's so nice to be on a podcast where somebody actually knows what homeopathy is and you get the bigger <laughs> picture because I'm used to being on podcasts and people have no idea what it is and they think it's herbs and they don't understand yeah. but it's really lovely that you actually understand that the bigger picture with homeopathy um, and I think if you get raised with western medicine which is what I was yeah. uh, raised with uh, we get taught that if there's a pain somewhere you have to go and suppress it immediately yeah. if you've got a cough you have to suppress it immediately with um, anti- uh, so which actually in the Merck manual it does say not to suppress it with uh, conventional cough medication which is interesting I've actually got the Merck manual sitting right there it's like this <laughs> thick it's the 25th fifth year anniversary edition but it actually says they're in the mainstream like medical manual not to use uh, antitussives yeah. because you need your body is trying to get that mucus up which has got the bacteria and the viruses and things and it's trying to get it out or if we've got a headache, we suppress it immediately instead of thinking, why did that headache start in the first yeah. place? Or one of the classics is young girls who have problems with their periods when it starts and they get put on hormonal contraceptives oh, no. straight away. And th that's something that just terrifies me so much because not a lot of people, women know that the only time in your life when you produce progesterone is when you ovulate. And when you're on the pill, you don't ovulate, it's suppressing your ovulation. And so progesterone, which is one of the most incredible hormones to protect us against cancer, and it's a feel-good hormone, it's good for our bones, it's got so many health benefits. If you're on the contraceptive pill and you're not ovulating, you're not producing progesterone, and so you don't have any of these incredible health benefits that this amazing hormone has. But any, you know, if you if you have got a grief, you are told to go on antidepressants. If you yeah. feel anxious, you go on anti-anxiety meds. If you have ADHD, then they say go on Ritalin instead of finding, well, why do you have ADHD? Is it a trauma response? Yeah. What is your diet like? Are there lots of stimulants in your diet? Lots of additives. Are you getting enough sleep? What's your environment like? Have you got lots of screen time? Like, Go find out yeah. why those symptoms are there. Get curious. Just, yeah. 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 I love it. Symptoms, um, yeah. It's your body's way of talking to you. That's that's exactly it. I had a lovely um, conversation actually with a herbalist, which is different to homeopathy, um, a few uh, episodes ago called Megan. And she said, like, symptoms are your body's messages to you. They're like, you know, they're writing these little notes to you to say, hang on a minute. <laughs> like, this is this is something we need to draw your attention to. And it's and it is it's just this completely different approach which is which is what I mean I love and I've seen the benefits myself um but yeah I mean I don't know have we to, have we talked enough about what homeopathy is do you want to just <laughs> maybe sort of like circle back to anyone who might be like oh I've never come across homeopathy before like these guys are really clearly quite excited about it <laughs> like, but um you know I I actually have no idea what they're talking about so maybe we should we should just cycle back a little bit and just uh just bring in like um talk a little bit about where homeopathy originated from and 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 how it's made and and things like that mm -hmm. I just have to say, I actually love that you did that because, you know, as a, for our, for the listeners that I'm a podcast host as well of the homeopathy hangout podcast. And so the way that you were doing that, I was thinking, oh, that's actually very clever that she's doing that. Cause we're like getting people reeled in with these stories and <laughs> then we tell them what it is, because often if you start off telling people what homeopathy is, they just like, what on earth is this? So I'll give you a simple explanation. Homeopathy is nat a natural medicine with where the medicines are derived from plant mineral or animals but we only need a teeny tiny amount um to uh, because the remedies are diluted in succas and then we use the energetic frequency of that now that all sounds a little bit woo woo it's really <laughs> not there is this incredible lady called veda austin which i think most people on the planet have heard of these days and she talks about how water has a memory yeah. um and there's dr masaru emoto and i think there's just more and more information coming out dr luke montagnier has done some work on this as well he was a nobel prize laureate um so there's more and more of this info type of information coming out about the memory of water 
Um, but this the the principle of homeopathy is actually really simple. And I really like to give this example so that people can kind of get it. Um, when you go to a, um, I mean, we have lots of snakes here in Australia. So when you go to the hospital with a snake bite, what's the first thing that they're going to give you? Uh, what, uh, would you have an anti-venom perhaps? Yeah, anti exactly. Which is made from snake venom, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if you've ever heard of allergy immunotherapy, so if somebody is allergic to grass or bees or things like that, they yeah. actually take the physical grass, they grind it up and they inject it into you over a course of weeks uh, and sometimes months and sometimes years. And I've had clients who have done that. And after years of treatment it hasn't worked, then we give them the homeopathic remedy made from that bee or that grass. And the energetic resonance of that has cured their allergies. Um but uh, but homeopathy is basically based on the principle of like cures like, which means that something that can cause a symptom in a healthy person can cure that same symptom in a sick person, like I just mentioned with the yeah. snake and the and the grass. But also, if you think of onions, if you chop an onion, you know your eyes are going to start yeah. watering, right? You're tearing up, and then <laughs> yeah. But then one of our best remedies for like colds or hay fever, where one of the main symptoms is the streaming mm, of the yeah. eyes, is the remedy Allium sepa, which is made from the onion. Yeah. Um, and another example that I'm sure everyone, although maybe in the UK not so much because you are tea drinkers, but over here we're more, mostly coffee drinkers. <laughs> you know, if you've had too much coffee, you know you can feel quite jittery and that anxious wired and kind of yeah, yeah that's yeah. wired feeling and um, insomnia, I can't get to sleep. But the homeopathic remedy made from coffee is incredible to calm the nervous system and to help you with sleep. Yeah. So I hope that kind of gives your listeners a bit of an explanation. Yeah, I think, um, and the, something that I love about it as well is the, the person who developed it, he he actually was very scientific in his approach. You know, he, he basically took these small amounts of um, whichever substance that he was interested in and he gave them to healthy people to see what symptoms they developed. And then he, you know, he'd be, he was very careful observing it all. I mean, very scientific, really. It was, a, it was a, this huge scientific experiment that he undertook. Um, and then when he'd sort of, got this picture of of the symptoms that each remedy because we call them remedies don't we that it's a homeopathic mm. remedy um for each one and then he would go to someone who had those symptoms because they were ill and he would then test the remedy to see if it helped them recover and i mean i think that's that's the thing that is it's kind of missed by some of the people who dismiss it is like actually you had this amazing scientist he had been a doctor and um and well I'm sorry I'm, I'm taking over here <laughs> no keep going he I'm was, just sitting um, here he like amazed a, that you know this I'm so happy <laughs> wasn't he as well and he um was. so he gave up he was quite uh, disheartened by the medicine of the time um and he basically went into translation and it was through that that he came across a text that kind of sparked his interest but he still had that kind of scientific medical mind and he he went in and did all of these experiments and kind of um devoted his life to it really didn't he and and it's just it's amazing like i mean that there are thousands and thousands of different remedies aren't there of made of all sorts of things like you said from plants minerals animals um and just yeah this this huge i mean you're that that's why i recommend people do seek out the the support of of a trained homeopath because mm the amount of remedies out there are just phenomenal and you know it's it's it is a real skill um to actually to match someone's symptoms with with what might be appropriate and whilst some homeopathic medicines have kind of filtered into the mainstream and most people probably be quite aware of them like we've mentioned arnica like actually that might not you might try it and it might not give you the results that you want because you need that subtlety of of understanding that only a homeopath can bring. Yeah, but then in the same breath, it is really easy for home users to use. So for the basics, you know, like uh, the remedy Cantharis, which is made from the Spanish blister beetle. And, you know, um, that one's really good for urinary tract infections and yeah. burns. And I sometimes just wish that 
everybody had this remedy in their household because I've had it so many times where I've burned my hand on the stove and I take a dose of cantharis and it takes the pain away instantly yeah. and there's no blistering the next day or belladonna for fevers or you know aconite for frights and shocks and think, but and, and you can easily yeah. prescribe that yourself you don't need to be a homeopath for that but, but for certainly for chronic diseases so acute disease i'll just differentiate that because some people don't know but acute yeah. disease is something that's self-limiting if you have a cold it'll just go away by itself after a while if you do nothing with it but a chronic disease will not go away by itself like something like arthritis or Crohn's disease or any sort of autoimmune disease really um, or if you've had eczema that's been going on for a few months or if you've had a cough even that's been going on for a few months then it becomes chronic anything that's longer than sort of like a week or two that is not going away by itself that's when a homeopath really um, is worth their weight in gold yeah I think um, and something else that really appeals to me about it is they're actually they're really cheap <laughs> Yes, and it, like, but isn't that yeah. the way medicine should be? Like, yeah, if you and it think makes about it, it accessible, doesn't it, to people? And like you say, you can, you know, they are safe. You can have this little bit of degree of experimentation at home. You know, have your little kits that you know helps, particularly in first aid situations, like you were just saying, like you've you've burnt yourself, or arnica is obviously particularly good for bruising and shock and things like that. And you know, it's. It, it's just, I mean, I, I have it for my horses. I have like several pots of, <laughs> of things that I have for them. And and it's just amazing to, it, it's empowering, isn't it? I think for me, that's what I feel is, it's the sense of empowering, like, you know, you, you're bringing awareness to your own body, your family, your health, what's going on, but then you, you feel you can do something as well in that moment, in that immediate moment, rather than being like, oh, I've got to, you know, am I sick enough to go to the doctor? Do I mm. need like the emergency medical or, uh, yeah. So that's for me is, is the empowering mm. side of it as well. Yeah. And if you weren't sick before you went to the doctor, you'll certainly be sick after you've been there because there's all the germs in the <laughs> reception area <laughs> and all the trauma. And I don't know what your medical system's like over there, but it's pretty shocking over here. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's great as well. Don't get me wrong. We have um, emergency medicine is really great. I will never, I, I'm very grateful to the medical profession. So I don't mean that. I just mean that sometimes it can be really hard to get the right diagnosis or, you know, you can feel really rushed just in and out of the doctor's office, you know, within five minutes, 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, it can be really hard. And I always say I feel sorry for the medical profession because they have a hard gig. I mean, I could yeah. not help anybody if I only had a five or 10 minute consultation with a person. I couldn't do anything. So I, I feel really sorry for them. I think they could fix the medical system if they just made consultations like half an hour instead of five minutes. I think you yeah. could help people more. I mean, preferably an hour, but half an hour is certainly going to be a good start. Um, but they're yeah. so under so much pressure. I but think... you were right. The empowerment is a is a big one. And everybody should have a little homeopathic first aid kit with them, especially if you have little ones. But every, I mean, everybody should. I always have my, I'm just getting it off my handbag. I always have my little um, <laughs> homeopathic kit is attached to my handbag. This is my yeah. own little, my own brand. But I never go anywhere without, you know, my 10 little remedies that's clipped onto my handbag. And we've used this so many times when we've gone to parks and kids have had bee stings or fallen over or all sorts. So it's great. Yeah, I think, um, that's the thing is that they're, they're they're wonderful like obviously if, if people are listening to it and they couldn't see you um she had, you just had this this lovely little pouch it's probably about this about the size of a, a mobile phone i guess a little bit but but thicker and it had just these 10 little bottles in it um because homeopathic pills if if you've not had them before um the remedies well there's various different ways that you can have them but in your pouch just there you had the the little little pills and so you can you've you can have this little emergency thing and it's it's really small and <laughs> it's wonderful yeah I can't recall if you say that you do video at all or no video yeah no I've, I've got video if people want to watch okay. this on YouTube okay but yeah yes yeah. so we can see the tiny little pill in there and you just got this yeah on your tongue and then <laughs> yeah. um I mean something that is that I will point out to um and you can you can dive in here is um there are just certain things that it's a good idea to if you're taking them not take them with with other strong smells so you know things like you just brush your teeth or something or ha avoid having a coffee immediately afterwards isn't it things like that that help uh, make it effective as well absolutely but you know at the same time I have to say we get taught that you have to take the remedies 
away from food. So if you've just eaten something, have some water to clean your palate. Yeah. Then take your remedies. Then you can wait like sort of five or 10 minutes and then you can eat again. But when I've had to administer remedies to my donkeys, I've like drilled a hole in their carrot and then put <laughs> the pillules in there and administered it that way. You can also put it in their water trough. There are farmers who use homeopathy in their huge water troughs and often they are actually quite filthy, but the remedies <laughs> still work. Yeah. Um, and but yeah, it is best straight on the tongue. You can have the liquid or the pillules just straight on the tongue. Um, it's best not to give it with food, but honestly, sometimes with cats, for example, you know, it can be really hard to open their mouth and chuck a pillow in there or even get them to drink the water. It's like they know there's something in the water. You know, cats <laughs> are very smart, so you can put it in their food, but it's not the preferred way to do it. So, if you are doing it that way and you find you're not getting good results, it could be that you might just have to adjust the way that you're administering it. Yeah, no, it's um I know with my my horses I used to um like like you said, like get an apple and, and try and like poke it in. Um over time actually they've um they kind of they almost ask for them now. So they just they they just sort of go in a feed scoop and they just literally oh. lick them up <laughs> straight away and they're um it's it's quite nice as well because they there's a degree of like they kind of when they really want them, they're like quite like they lick mm -hmm. them up quite sort of almost aggressively like get them and then like obviously as they sort of their body starts to go actually I don't need it so much anymore then they sort of become a bit like you know they sort of push them around the bowl a little mm. bit which which is quite quite nice and, and very interesting to see that they do have that that fluctuation of going actually yeah mm. this was helping now I, I don't need it anymore I'm I'm feeling better so you honestly blow me away with your homeopathic knowledge. I am so impressed. <laughs> and some people will actually, if they're tossing up between a couple of remedies for their animals, they will actually offer them both and then let the animal decide. And animals are incredibly intuitive and they yeah. will pretty much always pick correctly. Yeah, it's, it is. I do that with, with one of mine as well. It's it's the sort of conversation I've developed over the years with him. And, you know, I can hold them. I, I can be like, well, it, in my head, I'm like, well, I've used these before. This sort of situation might need it, but I'm not, I can't, you know, this sort of analytical mind has taken over and I'm like, I can't decide. And, and I'll sort of go to them and and he'll pick, he'll like nudge the bottle and go, yeah, that's, that's the one I'm having today. And yeah, it's, it's, um, I mean, animals are incredible. I do. And, and horses, I think perhaps because of their size, um, they kind of, they're quite, once you sort of develop this conversation with them, they're quite interesting to sort of have this relationship with where you sort of bring them into sort of getting involved in in what they they choose and want to select and yeah yeah it's... actually little children are actually quite good as as well they will often select intuitively it's yeah. i know it's sorry if it sounds but if it, it, the woo woo is put turning anyone <laughs> off listening but children can often decide intuitively um and that sometimes they will just uh grab the remedies and just chuck a whole bottle down and that's the beautiful thing about homeopathy is that it's so safe if your child eats the entire bottle it's actually only counts as one dose so it's yeah. not the amount that you take it's the frequency that you take it so if you if you are taking it every um, 15 minutes for say six doses that will have a therapeutic effect but if you just like chug a whole bottle that really counts as one dose so it's just so wonderful to have safe medicine in the house because if you have a little one that gets hold of your Ritalin or your uh, antidepressive medication and downs all of that you know it can yeah. be really dangerous and um, I've had a few clients that that's happened to and um, if with homeopathy, it just means your child's going to have a bit of a sugar rush and mm. it might be, you know, an expensive exercise if they get hold of your kit of remedies and eat all of it. I've had that happen <laughs> several times too with clients. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, that's something that, that really, that was part of how you got into homeopathy, wasn't it? It was actually, um, you were struggling to be a naturopath, weren't you? And, and then, you, and then yeah. you changed track halfway through, but it was partly because um, it appealed because it was safe for pre while you're mm. pregnant and also for um, newborn babies. And that's that's a an area of, of sort of conventional medicine that really doesn't have a lot to offer people does it there's um and you know... even the natural health industry like there are so many herbs and supplements that you cannot use in children under two years old yeah. and when you're pregnant you can almost take nothing you can take some magnesium and some vitamin c and some zinc and that's about it like you really there's really not much you can take when you're pregnant so uh that really is where homeopathy shines um, it can be used to treat the side effects of medications. Um, it can be used, like I always say, there's no, there's nothing, no condition, mental, emotional, physical, that homeopathy 
uh, is not able to help with. Now, I didn't say cure. I said help with. Yeah. Because if your arm has been amputated, homeopathy is not going to make your arm grow back, but it will help you with a mental, emotional trauma of losing that arm so that you can feel okay about life so you can move on and be your best self. Um, yeah. In cases of um, where someone's in palliative care, their organs are shut down, there's nothing you can do. And maybe they're still holding on or they're fearful. You can give them a remedy called arsenicum. It's the top remedy for um, that stage of, you know, life. I mean, death is part of life, right? Yeah. And so it will help that person just be okay within themselves and accept the process that's happening and just release and let go so they can pass peacefully. Yeah, um, I think that's yeah. one of the beauties of it, isn't it? Is there actually, there is such a diversity of, of things that it can help with both physical but also the emotional side of it because like you you touched on earlier like you know there aren't a lot of tools really in the toolbox in conventional medicine for emotional things it's pretty much antidepressants and you know whereas whereas this is is much more subtle and it can actually help you feel better rather than sort of just plateauing your sort of emotional state so that you can cope um and yeah, I well, like you can see, I'm, I'm <laughs> I love it. I think it's, I think it's an amazing modality. I think, you know, mm. I love the fact that the remedies are are really quite affordable. So I feel mm. like it's something that is within reach of everyone. You know, like you you mentioned earlier about um, places in Africa, you using it for for farmers. You know, it's affordable, <laughs> which is which is exactly. amazing as well. Yeah, and they can homeopathically uh, immunize a lot of those people as well. You know, it takes them like um, one cent to homeopathically immunize the children for, you know, various diseases. And um, it's it's so safe and effective. And there is a organization also called uh, Ama Resonance Foundation that does amazing things in Africa. And they've got on their website, I think it's arhf.nl because it's a website in the Netherlands. Uh, they have a one hour documentary on there and you can see the testimonials of these people in Africa and how the remedies have changed their lives. For anybody who wants more like scientific evidence, you can go to um, the Homeopathic Research Institute, which is actually an organization in the UK. Um, and Dr. Alex Tunier and Rachel Roberts, you know, do a lot of uh, involved with a lot of the research that's happening around homeopathy. Um, there is a, uh, a couple of really in interesting documentaries. Uh, one is called Just One Drop and the other one's called Magic Pills. They're two incredible homeopathic documentaries. And in April this year, there is another documentary called Introducing Homeopathy. Um, you can watch, it's going to be um, like a, you can purchase to watch it from the 19th or the 22nd of April, but they are in the process yeah. at the moment of trying to get it on Netflix. So they can't call it a premiere because it will premiere on Netflix if that all goes through. So this will just be like a private screening for anybody yeah. who wants to buy a ticket and watch it in that time frame. But I tell you what, Fiona, if this is gets accepted to Netflix and goes out to billions of people around the planet, everybody's going to know what homeopathy is. And yeah. I am so excited about that at the moment. So definitely go check out introducing yeah, homeopathy.com. Um, I'm going to, in the in the show notes for people, which is the description below the podcast and also on my website page, I'm going to, I've got all uh, Eugenie's links, but I'll, I'll work with you and we'll put those extra links in for people as well. So if they want to find out more, um, because I think one of the, the sad things about homeopathy is that, in a very lazy way, the people who want to discredit it say there's no science to support it. And that's actually a lie. It, you know, mm. <laughs> Not beating about the bush is actually a lie. There's a, there is a lot of science. There's a lot of research out there. You do have to look for it because it's, you know, the mainstream media don't really want to report on it. But there is science out there that is very supportive of what homeopathy can achieve um, and you know, they they put it up against placebos in the same way that conventional pharmaceutical drugs would be tested. And they do. Well, they pharmaceutical have... drugs don't use placebo half no. the time. They just say <laughs> yeah, so. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But yeah, but they I mean, the like double blind studies and, and things yeah, like yeah. that. But yeah, they there is science out there that that mm. basically supports this. And um, and I think you you touched on it earlier as well. And it was something that I, I was going to say to you was about water and like that's part of I think what hasn't wasn't really understood about 
homeopathy and how it worked was this imprint of of water and water is just this amazing natural substance that we just didn't really understand for a very long time it doesn't behave like anything else <laughs> on the planet and we didn't really know what to do with it so we just kind of went we'll just put it over here on the shelf <laughs> and not, not really accept that it has all of these qualities that we we can't really explain at the moment so we'll just we'll just pretend that it's just like everything else and um there are just um, there's amazing research out there that just shows like actually how water can take on the energetic imprint of anything around it whether it's frequencies you know people mm, uh, there's amazing studies of like you know people thinking loving thoughts towards mm -hmm. water and then freezing it and they're getting these am amazing like beautiful patterns and then you know again sort of you know thoughts of hate and and judgment and like not very nice things towards it and you know getting completely different um alignment of the ice crystals when they freeze it, mm. it there's fascinating things about that as well isn't there absolutely yeah but um i don't i mean is there anything that you sort of would like to talk about particularly about homeopathy or you know I, I don't know I mean I, I feel like yeah. <laughs> I, I I just think everyone should give it a try and um I I often hear people say oh I didn't think to use homeopathy for that and I'm always like how did you not like there's literally nothing physical mental or emotional that homeopathy is not able to help with so I'll, I'll try and ramble off a few things just off the top of my head but if you have if you've had a traumatic birth um, and your baby might be a bit stunned. You might be a bit stunned. There's remedies for birth trauma. If your baby then has colic and reflux, there's remedies for that. Um, if your baby has uh, issues with weight gain, there's remedies for that. There's remedies to help increase your breast supply. There's remedies to detox you from birth drugs. There's remedies to help detox you from injections. There is remedies for failure to thrive, for delayed development. If you've got a child that's delayed teething, that's late to walk, that's late to speak. There's remedies for any... Uh, diagnosis you can possibly get is out there and um, there's remedies for if your child if, if you're weaning your about your child and there's lots of grief you can give remedies to help yeah. your child with grief or ignatia to help the weaning process early easier if they're going to school you know and that transition is hard for them there's remedies for that there's remedies for you there's remedies for night terrors um which often if a child's got night terrors you know what do you you can't take them to a psychologist what if, you know yeah. like yeah. there's not much you can do but the remedy stramonium is incredible for night terrors and aconite as well um you can give them say they watch a scary movie then they start getting night terrors and you can give them aconite or stramonium there's remedies for bumps bruises sore throats coughs colds um eczema any Anything that can happen with your body, there is a remedy for that. Um, a remedy for low self-esteem, for weight loss. Um, but like, you know, I'm just trying to think yeah. of some things that I've been treating then, in the clinic just even this week. And we hope they can help with all of that. But the mental emotionals, I feel, is really where homeopathy shines. And uh, to help you reach kind of like a higher state of consciousness as well. So there are some remedies that can really help you kind of level up. So if you, and it can help, there's remedies that can help you with ancestral trauma. So if you have something going on and nothing seems to really work with you, it could be that it's actually not your trauma blocking the healing response. It could be ancestral trauma, you know, things coming through and we have remedies for that as well. So sometimes then we just need to clear. I might get the, the term away. wrong here, but is it, is it myism? Is that the. Oh, yeah. there's, yep, yeah, miasmatic yeah. as well, but also, um, definitely miasmatic remedies that's i'm like honestly so impressed that you know that there's also other remedies that can also help with um trauma of a of a different yeah just all anything trauma homeopathy is amazing for think, that. um when i was listening to you i was thinking obviously the parallels with um you know with um animals as well and you know a lot of a lot of the newborn you know birth problems young you know teething I mean that's a, applicable to a lot of animals as well the you know the separation you think of little puppies when they're sort of 10 12 weeks old and they you know leave their oh, mum and exactly. they go off to this new home and and all the you know things that they it can support with them but the other thing um I know that you mentioned on your website is that um actually for your own children they've never had antibiotics and again this is um you know something that is becoming more talked about and awareness of is you know we we have we've got these problems with resistances to you know in terms of 
um, you know, antibiotics, there's, there's resistance to antibiotics in terms of animals. Um, we've got resistance to worming protocols and things, the, the medicines that are available for that. And again, this is a, a beautiful place where homeopathy has this amazing, you know, power really to f step into this this void and and basically offer you things to do um, that don't then create the resistance and the problems that we have with the anti antibiotics and things. Exactly. Well, that documentary documentary Magic Pills. Uh, actually is about a guy who had MRSA. So it was resistance um, stuff, so resistant to the antibiotics. Yeah. And it was basically nothing else they could do with him. So as a last resort, he went to a homeopath, got cured, <laughs> then got interested and make a, made a documentary with uh, Ananda Moore. So I, I think it was, in, I'm pretty sure it was in that one or it was in uh, just one drop, either one of the two, but it's a pretty mm -hmm. fascinating story. Yeah, I think, yeah it's um... good, good that you mentioned that point because antibiotic resistance is something that, is really scary. You know, one of the things I see in clinic all the time are clients with urinary tract infections in children and in adults. And they go for round after round of antibiotics. It destroys their gut flora. So then their yeah. immune system's down. So then they are more susceptible to UTIs. And so, you know, they get it again and then they get thrush after the antibiotics and their gut flora is just so destroyed. So they just go on this roller coaster of antibiotics and then they end up with interstitial cystitis. And it's, you know, yeah. and then they have the, to have these horrible drugs for, which have horrendous side effects. You can listen to my interview I did with um, Paula Brown, who is the president of Americans for Homeopathy Choice. And that was her story. So she okay. had the cycle of UTIs, then ended up with interstitial cystitis, and then we had to go on these drugs. Well, was told she had to go on these drugs with yeah horrendous side effects. And then she found homeopathy instead. So yeah, I mean, I'm, there's countless yeah. stories like that. So... <laughs> I um I would so Eugenia has her own podcast. In case people didn't catch it earlier, it's called the Homeopathy Hangout, and um there'll be a link to that as well. But you can obviously, if you're on a podcast player, you can look it up, and it'll be there available for you as well. So definitely go and have a look. I think you've got several hundred episodes, and you know countless amazing guests that you've spoken to, and there's a, just a whole brilliant like almost encyclopedic knowledge about homeopathy that you can just dive straight into um we've also got a link to an amazing video that you've done that is just a little quick sort of 30 minute introduction to homeopathy as well um because you're just actually to touch on for people you're actually based in perth in australia and um you have your own clinic there with uh, i think is it six other homeopaths i mean quite yeah, a, five quite other a homeopaths big, busy place six staff. Yeah. yeah and um but you do you do consultations for people worldwide or is it just for people there my um, my the homeopaths on my team treat people worldwide but okay. i always try to say find a home find a local homeopath just as easy with the time zones my staff my homeopaths on my team they do see people all over the world america uk wherever um, but if you can find a local homeopath that really there's a lot of power that lies in that and then you have like a confidant you have somebody that has your back yeah. uh, if there's an emergency situation you can go grab a remedy or they can post something out to you and it's much easier to build that rapport I would say I've got um, almost 300 episodes on the podcast with homeopaths from around the world so I would say listen to a few of them see which homeopath you resonate with and then um, may, often homeopaths will have 10 minute free discovery calls. So make a few of those calls to really make sure that you have good rapport with that person, because that is the most important thing before you start your journey. Have good rapport with that. So you feel safe with that homeopath and you can really open up to them. Yeah, because that's that's the thing, isn't it? Is, um, you know, it, it does rely on, you know, having this deeper connection with someone you know a deeper relationship with them and so you're going to go on a journey with them so yeah you want to find someone that you know you, you feel aligned to you feel comfortable with that you um you know that you're happy to to sort of tell all the gory details to as it were um and yeah I think that that's really great advice to to say and there's a lot of countries have will have um I guess uh, sort of uh, homeopathic associations and things that you could look up and find mm. local people as well. And of course, Google is brilliant for <laughs> for searching for things now as well. Okay. Um, it's a lot easier to find than it would have been in years past. But um, mm. oh well, I mean, it's kind of it's been a bit of a whistle stop. Um, 
as a chat today i think there is so much about homeopathy that we could we could dive into and, and hopefully maybe at some point in the future we can come back and have another chat and maybe sort of go a little bit deeper into things but um i think it feels like a, a nice time to sort of like round up for today's chat but if there is there anything that you'd like to just leave people with um you know any sort of message on your heart that you'd like to to share with people today about about anything homeopathy or anything beyond that Oh, if it's if it's homeopathy related, then I would say just give it a try. There is a homeopathic revolution happening right this second after COVID. Just so many more people wanting to empower themselves. Yeah. And if it's just a message in general for people to um, put down their phones and connect with the people around them more. Yeah, I think. Um, and with nature. Beautiful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's just, um, I mean, for me, it, it plays into the relationship with nature, you know, that all of these remedies are are from you know sort of natural sources and it's just it's this message of basically just empowering people and I think that's that's really something that I'm quite passionate about is about giving people the tools the the knowledge the wisdom to just take back a bit of autonomy over you know the decisions that they can make and have in life and for me homeopathy has, has been part of that it's empowered me with with my animals, my family to feel like, you know, there's something I can do. And I think that's, that's really is just, it just changes your, your, your physiology almost, doesn't it? To, to know that actually you have the ability to, to make an impact on your health. And mm. I think that's, that's something that we've kind of forgotten, but we are slowly remembering and yeah. I thanks. literally just want to give you a round of applause <laughs> after that. Oh, nice. um, I think you should go train to be a homeopath. You sound, yeah. um, you sound like you know so much yeah, about it already. I think, I think um, well, I've, I've trained to be quite a few things, <laughs> and I think that that's my my challenge is I'm just like I'm I'm just there's a big sponge basically, and I have like so much information about so many things, and I you know I I'm I I wouldn't say a jack of all trades and the master of none, but just I just have so many interests and it is like did I'm you like, know that there's a second tale to that one because I always call myself a jack of all trade a, a master of none and then my husband recently said you know there's another part to that it says oftentimes better than master of one and I'm like oh, oh I never heard that part no, I know like I've that. never so heard jack that of all trade master of none oftentimes better than master of one. Oh <laughs> well there we go so you see perfect that's amazing <laughs> I love that and I think that's the perfect way for us to wrap up today I will have all of your links available I'll also hopefully um I'll, when I go through I'll pull out the other links that we've mentioned for people and um yeah just thank you so much for everything that you're doing basically championing homeopathy for people and giving them the opportunity to to basically empower themselves and their families because I think that's really just the biggest gift that you can give people is is that so thank you again for thank everything you you're so doing. much and can I just say thank you for all the work you put into your podcast because it's only a fellow podcaster that will know how much time <laughs> and effort and money and blood and sweat and tears goes into <laughs> creating a podcast nobody will ever know unless they've done one themselves so I want, just want to say thank you to you oh. as well Oh, thank you. That means a lot. Yes, it is. Um, it's it's definitely a, a labor of love, isn't it? It really but, is. Yeah, it's a it's a great. I I love podcasting though because I feel, particularly now in our society and our culture, you know, everything is is kind of reduced down to like these little snippets, little quotes, little you know, small bits of information and. I was reflecting the other day how much I love the opportunity to sit down with someone for an hour and literally just dive full into them and what they're doing. There's no distractions, you know, we've got everything is on silence, on mute, there's no notifications buzzing off and you're just, you know, that's just a real gift, I think, in society now to have that opportunity to just be fully present with someone and, and listen to their wisdom and, and also then get to share it with with other people around the world so yeah mm. I, a podcasting revolution alongside homeopathy <laughs> revolution <laughs> and then, and we're, we're hopefully society's on the right track i think so um yeah. i hope so oh thank you so much oh lovely thank you eugenie and, and hopefully uh we'll we'll come back and have another chat again soon as well 
Thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life. I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends, leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.